Hey everybody, welcome to another Bill Sky, the assembly guy. And what we're going to do today is this is an unscripted video. It's something I was thinking about the other day. It might be kind of a valuable to the new assembler language programmers. And a lot of you probably don't even know about this. But the subject we're going to talk about today is make files. Now, what in the world is a make file? A make file is a file called make file that named make file that tells the computer how to build your applications, how to build your product, how to build your solution. And it's an industry standard thing. It's not just on Linux. It's not just on Mac. It's on Windows too. And most integrated development environments like Eclipse or Visual Studio, they use make files underneath the covers. And I thought it would be a good idea to show you what a make file is all about. So what we've got right here is we've got my Linux, and the reason I keep using Linux is it's so much easier to do development on, but it's, it's just the choice of most developers. So let's just go ahead and play around with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my documents folder, and I'm just going to create a new folder right here, and I'm going to call this test make, and inside of there, I am going to create a, an empty file called makefile. Now, if I right click on the white background and I say open in terminal and I take, type make, make is a program that is pretty much default installed on any development operating system, any operating system that has the development tools installed, including Windows. So right now, it, it just said, it, it, what make did was it, it found this make file, and the make file was empty, so it said there's no targets. I'm just gonna stop. Now, the, one of the benefits of a make file is that you have different stages of your build when you build a product, and let's say you have 30 different source files in that, in that product, and you only change a single source file. Well, instead of compiling every single source file, it only compiles the source file that you've changed. And then of course it has to do the link to link all of the object files together. So there's a lot of intelligence within a make file and that's one of the benefits. Uh, when I was with IBM, when I left, we had a product, I don't know if I should mention the name of it, but we had a product that had probably three, 2,000 different source files. The product was huge. It spanned, you know, 150 different operating systems and versions, and it supported different browser versions. It just was crazy, the, the, the expanse of this product. And if you just change a single file, why should you have to build all of those, all of those source files again? And, and it could take a weekend. I am not exaggerating. It could take a weekend to build that whole thing. So just build the one thing that changed and then link it, which itself could take a long time, but link it, and then you don't have to go through all that trouble of all that time, I should say. So again, that is one of the big benefits of a make file. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, this is a new project, but I'm gonna go into documents, I'm gonna go into my, and I just wanna go ahead and grab a, um, a main, dot asm file. So I'm going to just right click on it and say copy and I'm going to go back to my test make and I'm just going to paste it in there. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to have to write the the asm file from scratch. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into there and you can do this by just expanding a project, a template that I gave you and um, and then just looking at the make file, but I, I'm going to copy a, a number of files over there just so you could see, can see how I actually put together a make file. So these are the files that we're going to need. We're going to need the functions.inc, which is the include file for my functions. We're going to need the functions.o, that's the object file for all of those functions that I wrote for you guys. Then we have the main.asm file. So what if I want to, what if I want to build this thing? Well, there's a number of steps. I have to do, number one, I have to do the compile. So to do the compile, actually it's not a compile, it's an assemble. I have to assemble the main.asm. Assembly language is different than compiling. Compiling does a lot more than just convert from human readable code into machine code. 
a, but a vi, but a assembler just does that. It just takes every line of mach, every line of assembler code and just converts it into a machine code. There's no optimization. There's no nothing. So let's go ahead and assemble this. Now to send, assemble our main.asm file, I had to type a command line, and every operating system is the same way, everybody. I don't care what operating system you're on. There are command line tools involved. I'm going to go ahead and run the assembler here by hand. And that is how you assemble that. Now, if, if I, after I press enter, we have a main.o. That is the object file that was produced from the main.asm. So what is this assembler command? Well, NASM is the name of our assembler. Dash G, that means that we want to include debug symbols. So when, when I'm debugging my, my functions, I can actually see the source code. Uh, dash F, ELF32, that means that I want to, that's a 32-bit ELF version object file dash capital F dwarf, I believe that's the uh, debug symbols version. I, I could be wrong about that, but th that's what I use and it seems to work really well. main.asm, that's the file that we're going to assemble. Dash L means generate me a listing file called main.lst, which you can see was created there. Okay, so after that we have to link it. So I use the link, the LD command to link it. And I'm going to say it is a 386, which is a 32-bit application. The object, I want to create an object file called main or an executable file called main. And I want it to include the main.o file, which is the object file that we just assembled. And also, I want to include the functions.o file, which is the functions that that, that, that uh, main.asm uses. And now it created our executable program. So if I type main, the program ran. Okay? Now, pain in the neck to have to type that in every time, right? I mean, come on. It would just be really a really difficult to do that. Now, a very small project, maybe you can just, you know, press the up key, but pain in the neck. And that's where make files come into come into play. So let's go ahead and open this make file. Now this make file is empty. So the first thing that is very, very common to do is I want to say if I want to make all, if I want to build everything. I have a section or a target called all. A target is defined by a name with a colon after it. So all is the target, and that, and then after that colon, you write down the targets or the files that it relies upon. So the all target relies on the main target. What does the main target rely on? Well, it relies on the fact that main.o exists and functions.o exists, okay? Now this could either be an actual object file that exists or another target. Well, in the case of functions.o, we're not building that, I'm providing it to you. So we're just wanting to make sure that the functions.o file exists and main.o is a target that I haven't created yet and now I have created it. Now, main.o says that it relies upon the main.asm file existing and the functions.inc file existing. That means that for the main.o, for the object file to be created, not the executable, but the object file to be created, it wants to make sure that the main.asm and the main. or the functions.inc files exist because that's what the compiler needs. If both of those exist, execute the command that we just typed in the uh, command line there. So if both main.asm and functions.inc exist, execute this command. Now, if the object file is already at the current version, it's, it's gonna ignore this. It's gonna say, wait a minute, I already compiled that. I don't have to do it again, or I already assembled it. I don't have to do it again. That's the booty, it, it only, makes changes, it only does those steps if necessary. So once the object file exists because of our assembler step, then we do the link.
All right, so let's walk through this. Now let's say that main.asm exists, functions.inc exists, but the main.o file does not exist. So the main.o file needs to be generated. If it doesn't exist, this statement right here will be executed and will create the main.o as long as you don't have any errors in your source file. Once the main.o exists, the main target executes and does main.o exist? Yes, because it was just generated by this target. Does functions.o exist? Yes, because the file has been provided to you. Then it does the link. So it like it's like looks at the dependencies of each target. What are the dependencies of each, uh, dependencies of each target? And there's another one that I always like to do, another target I like to do called clean. And what clean does, it removes the generated object files the list file that was generated by the main.o target and it also deletes the executable program. So that's what clean does. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to close it. And now instead of having to remember all of these commands, I just type make. Oh, I typed it wrong. Make. Notice it said there's nothing to be done because we already have an object file out there. So the main.o target doesn't have to execute. We've already got an executable. So the, um, what was it? The main target doesn't have to execute because we don't have to link it, it's already there. Let's go ahead and delete the executable and let's see what happens. Notice what happened. It did not reassemble the main.asm. It just linked it because the object file was already there. So let's go ahead now and let's delete the main.o and let's delete the executable. And now let's do, let's do a make clean. That deletes all the things that it generated that this make file uh, created. And then I'll say make and notice what it did is it updated or it assembled the main.asm, then it linked it. So again, the, the make file is really it, it's a it's a menu. It's a it's a set of instructions. Now I'll be completely upfront with you. This is an extremely simple make file. Okay, there's many more sophisticated ways of writing a make file, but this is the beginning. This is how you would do it in a 32-bit application if you only had a few files. I mean, there are some make files out there that are so sophisticated. A single statement will, will compile or assemble multiple hundreds of, of source files. But so a little disclaimer here, this is a very simplistic make file, but it's a good good time to get a good way to get started. Now that's for a 32-bit. What do you have to do on a 64-bit? Well, on a 64-bit, you just have to possibly use different link commands. Okay, instead of using the 32-bit, maybe you'll just use a, a different link command. So I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and add some lines here. So that's 32. For 64-bit, there's a lot that's the same. So in this case, if it was a 64-bit application, I would use the dash F ELF64 to let the assembler know that it's 64-bit application. And what do we have to do on the link? Well, the linker by default makes everything a 64-bit application, so we don't have to specify any memory model. We don't have to specify that it's x86 or 64-bit. By default, it's 64-bit. Now, these lines will not work in this make file because that this program is a 32-bit application, so I'm going to delete those. And you can see these you can see these make files inside of the templates that I gave you. Now I didn't create any make files for Windows because I've, I'll be straight with you, I've never actually done command line assembly under Windows, even though I've been doing assembly for 45 years. I've never done it under Windows because I've always used Visual Studio. But in every other operating system on the planet, you need to know make files. So you can find additional stuff on YouTube on make files. Just do a search for make file tutorial. Make files are one of those things that you need to put in your quiver of knowledge in your brain that you know to be successful. Because 
MIG files are used all over the industry. Um, if you don't believe me, load up Eclipse. You can see the Eclipse integrated development environment here. Eclipse uses make files underneath the covers. You don't know it does, but it does do it. And it uses the make utility. I hope to see you at the next video.